Do you sometimes find that you have things to say, you have things to suggest, but your voice, not just literally, it gets ignored, squashed, or pushed out of the way? In this video, I'm gonna talk about how to use your aggression to help you stop being a spineless pushover. So keep watching. Hey, it's Keshav here. On this channel, I make daily videos about mastering your mindset and building a meaningful life where you're following your inner compass. Now let's get into the video because there's five things I wanna share. Now, when I was younger, I went through a period where I didn't grow as quickly as the other kids in my class. So I was really small. And I remember, you know, even going on my way to the lesson, I used to get pushed around and literally just shoved out of the way to where I am now, where I could be in a room full of 50 teenagers who are the naughtiest kids in their year. And I'm making sure that no one is talking when I'm talking, no one is messing around because I'm able to not only control this frame, but to control where their attention goes through how engaging I am, but using my aggression in a positive way. Now, how did I go from, you know, being a skinny little Gujarati kid at school, getting pushed around and not really feeling like I had a voice to, to use in a powerful way to doing one of the things that people find the most daunting, which is going into a classroom full of teenagers and getting them to focus on a topic like gender equality or why they should vote. Because it's not something they're immediately interested in. Well, this is what I use and, and the five things that I'm gonna share with you in this video are five things that I always fall back on again and again and again. So the first thing that I would say is identify something that you really care about and then act in accordance with that. Now, it's hard to use your aggression, to use your anger. And I wanna say something here because we often think that anger is a, a something we should avoid. Aggression is something we should avoid. Actually, no emotion is inherently negative. It's just how you use it. You you know, you get the, you get the logic here, just like, a cup you can put water into it and nourish yourself or you can put poison into it and destroy yourself same thing with any emotion and we want to learn to use not just our kindness but our aggression too to achieve the aims of helping people helping ourselves and making a difference so identify something that you care about if you care like me about changing the education system when i'm in the room with these 50 kids who some of them are like sit in there with this expression just chatting away because i know why i'm there like if you don't learn this it's going to affect you later on in life and i'm here as your big brother to help you to teach you the stuff that i wish i'd known so can you just for 50 minutes pay attention because afterwards i'm gone so when i'm talking to them i'm thinking about what am i trying to achieve here what do I believe in? And even if at first your voice is shaky, you're nervous, think about what it is, the intention and the place that you're coming from. Because it sounds wishy-washy and hoo-ha, I get it, but understand the reason behind what you're doing. Understand the purpose. And that will give you and generate the energy that you need, the emotion that you need. Where if you need to use aggression, you're not just quivering at the front saying, um, you know, I, I want to talk about it. We're going to talk about this today. And this relates to my second tip is know when to increase your vocal tonality, your speed, your pitch, and also your general body language. Sometimes what happens is as I'm speaking, someone is talking in this room. And so what I'll do is I'll use my aggression to just look them in the eye and just Are you done? Okay, and then I'll carry on. And it's a very big shift from smiling, joking around, this is the general energy I tend to have when I'm presenting, to just, I don't need to say anything, I don't need to do anything, but it's just knowing that when someone looks at you, non-verbally I'm saying, don't do that. And that's a small amount of aggression I'm using, again, to bring the attention back. And sometimes, yes, you know, it's two o'clock, they've had a, a load of sugar and they're tired, they're hungry. I don't know, all kinds of things could be going on, but just the look or changing my tone and talking like this because 
we're here for this, you know. Or sometimes moving it and just saying, well, this is what happened to me. When you don't learn about these things, I struggle with that for I applied to all these different jobs and got rejected because I didn't have my mental health in check. So knowing how can I vary the volume, the vocal range with which I'm speaking to match what I'm trying to communicate and using aggression can be a very powerful way to engage your audience and win people over, whether it's just one person you're talking to or 500. Number three, practice controlled aggression. Because here's the thing, you can't just access an emotional state if you're not used to accessing it, if you haven't felt it before, if you don't know what the physical cues are. For me, I know there's certain things that happen in my body, the way my eyebrows move, the way my breathing changes, the way that my facial expression changes, even the way my shoulders move when I'm going into a more aggressive state. And so where do I get a chance to practice that? When I go to the gym, when I'm weightlifting, you might be into boxing, you might be into whatever sport it might be, even yoga, but practice doing that one posture, doing that one rep, that one sprint, whatever it may be. And a lot of physical activities are kind of conducive to this because you have to really exert yourself, but practice doing it with anger, where you're not saying anything, you're not doing anything. It's a safe environment. It's not going to affect anyone, but you're really pushing yourself and you're feeling like, what does it, what is it like to be angry, to be aggressive? And how can I access that when I'm in a conversation? So it might just be learning to speak with a sterner tone. I'm not done talking at the moment. Thank you. Just to let people know, like, there's a boundary here. I'm setting it. Please do not cross it. That's what we're trying to communicate. Don't forget that you teach people how to treat you. And so first you got to learn, how do I want to be treated? And how can I ex access the emotional range that I need to display those things in a healthy, open way? So a good way to do this is to practice controlled aggression. Number four, have a switch in your mind where you know you can turn it on if needed. A couple of years ago, I think it was last year or the year before, during the summer, I was at a petrol station in my car waiting and a guy randomly started beeping his horn at me. So I turn around and I'm like, oh, what's going on? And I realized that I'm slightly blocking his entrance to get into the petrol station. There is actually plenty of room, but in my mind I thought, okay, no problem, let me just move. And so I moved my car all the way forward. He drives up, parks, and starts filling up. As he's doing so, I notice he rolls down the window and he's mouthing something at me, saying something, saying something. Now, I'm not really one for road rage or any of those things, but there are certain times where I know if I need to, I can turn that switch on. And what happened next, I was not expecting. As he's mouthing things to me, I just roll my window down and say, hey man, I'm sorry, I apologize. My car was blocking you. Please have a good day. I roll it back up. He still carries on. He still carries on. The next thing I notice, he comes over to my vehicle, comes over to my car, leans over, puts his hand, and he's saying something to me. So I roll my window down and I catch just a slight sentence of, you in this go back to your country now this guy was white and i'm brown and immediately in that moment i realized one of two things i can let this go cool but this is also a teachable moment and if i don't speak up here and now where else am i not going to speak up and so that's where my volume changed and the hunt i went from zero to 100 i got out of the car went straight up to him and said listen don't ever talk to me like that who do you think you are? I was born in this country. I work hard. I contribute to my community. So don't ever use my race or my ethnicity against me. Now, this is a very dramatic example. And I made sure I was, I was talking as loud as possible, as loud as possible. How dare you be racist to me? How dare you? Who do you think you are? And that was an example of knowing when to turn the switch on. Like there's certain things to get angry about and there's certain things not to really get angry about. So again, it's knowing the difference. Like where does my boundary lie? What fight do I want to fight? What is worth it? For me, fighting the prejudices and discriminations that people of color face all over the world. Yeah, I'm down for that. I'll get angry for that. I'll be aggressive. No problem. 
if it's useful in that scenario. If I'm talking to French CRS police on behalf of some refugees in the jungle refugee camp like I was a couple of years ago, maybe it's not useful for me to be aggressive there and I need to be polite. But it's just knowing when I'm communicating, what am I trying to achieve here? Where am I trying to get to? And how can I use the tools that I have available to me in the best way possible? And the final thing that I wanna say is, obviously it's different for every single person. Things like your race, your gender, your position, everything, they all play an influence in these things. But the number one thing that you can do to reduce at least the internal barriers is learn to accept yourself. Learn to accept your voice, your values, your thoughts, so that when it does come time to communicate something, you're comfortable doing it in a kind way, in an aggressive way, in this tone, in that tone, to achieve whatever it is that you wanna communicate. Because at the end of the day, that's what it's about, a relationship is about two, three, four, more people relating to one another towards a common goal, a common aim. We have to find that middle ground. We have to find the compromise sometimes. So it's about knowing what is the most useful way for me to achieve that. Hey everyone, hope you enjoyed the video. I want you to leave a timestamp below of the craziest expression I made in this video. Let's see who gets the funniest one. Peace.